Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, just bringing uh, another quick tutorial to you. Uh, this is going to be another uh, Cloud Functions tutorial. Um, decided to go with a specific one that I think will be incredibly useful to a lot of people uh, because it, it takes care of uh, a long standing problem of how do you establish a um, user's following list. Uh, and provide that that particular update to the user who was followed without editing um, the user's document directly, which of course is a security risk. Uh, you don't want to apply an update um, that is triggered by one user to a, another user's document directly. Uh, you want that to be handled server side so that there's no direct interaction between the two users' documents. Um, Otherwise, you could uh, potentially expose your users to um, security problems. So uh, what I have is a uh, very simple custom function that runs in uh, cloud uh, functions in, for Firebase. Um, and what, it, what it's going to do is when a, uh, in your uh, Flutterflow app, uh, you have your um, actions to trigger uh, a following action. So let's say that user A clicks on user B's profile and taps the follow user button. Um, what this will do is user A's um, I am following list would be updated with the uh, user ID for the user that they have um, just indicated that they want to follow. Uh, but we want user B be this person, user B's uh, users following me list to automatically update with that user's uh, UID. That way um, they could get a push notification stating that user A has started following them, you know, follow them back, uh, and whether they follow them back or not, their users following me list will automatically be populated with any user that that indicates that they want to follow them. Um, super handy, definitely need this. Uh, this can also be applicable to friends, friend requests, things like that. Uh, but the following function is what we're looking at right now. So um, just for demonstration purposes, I just have the users collection. I have two users in here and they have identical fields. Um, the fields are I am following, which is an array or a list field and it's a list of string um, documents uh, because we're just going to use the user ID. We're not actually using a reference like Flutterflow has. We're just going to put in the, the UID. Um, and then we have users following me, which obviously is going to be updated with um, the, the user who initiates the, the following uh, action. But we also have this, this um, field here, which is the last uh, followed update field, which is a single string field. And so in your action flow and flutter flow, whenever the user um, taps the follow button, you would want to add user B's U UID to this array field, but you'd also want to update this field to include that uh, user B's UID as well. So you just put it in two places. And what happens is, is that the custom function is listening to this field in all of the user documents. And anytime this field receives an update, the function will be triggered and it will look at this, this field. It'll grab the UID for this field, go into the uh, associated user's document, take the UID from user A's document and plug it into user B's uh, users following me and add it to the array automatically. All right, um, so the custom function uh, to actually make that happen <clears throat> is here. So if you watched my other uh, cloud function tutorial that I put up, I believe yesterday, you recall that we created an index file um, whenever we initiated our Firebase project in our folders uh, on our local machine. And this is the function that we had created um, at that time and added to our, our project for purging uh, associated documents to a user after a given amount of time of inactivity. Um, 
so what we want to do then is just take that same index file you don't have to create a whole different uh, project directory if you don't want to you can keep it all together in one um, so you open up that that index file here's the the first code we got so you go all the way down here um, go down to the bottom so your uh, the start of your file needs to start with this but you don't have to uh, as a matter of fact you cannot repeat this for each function otherwise you'll throw an error you only need to, to declare this once and then your uh, custom function will start with exports typically so um, that's kind of how you tell where your next function should begin uh, so you go down here and this is the end of the first function, so just um, went down a couple of lines and then added in the next function, which is the uh, the one for the following list. Uh, and this is this is the function here that that we're looking at. Again, very simple, not a whole lot to it. Um, you got the the name associated with it. Um, it's. Uh, uh, checking the before data, the after data, essentially is just making sure that um, if that that update was triggered to that um, uh, that that single string field, it's it's looking to make sure that the data has actually changed um, to make sure that something weird didn't happen and that a user who has already been followed uh, hasn't somehow been followed twice. Um, in this way, if the uh, data that was inside that string field is the same um, when the function is triggered again it won't it won't continue with the function it'll only it'll only initiate so long as the data has changed um, okay so that that's basically what that's doing and then it's just it's indicating you know look look at that UID field take it plug it into the associated users document um, with the uh, with the user who initiated the um, uh, the the function and the action flow, so real simple. I'll put a link to this code uh, in the description of this video so that you can take a look at it um, and deploy it. And I've already uh, deployed it. I did all that, uh, but the easiest way to do that, obviously, you plug it into your index. You'd save your index file. Make sure your syntax is correct. Uh, you may get some. Uh, errors here, which I did get. I got some some syntax errors and had to straighten a few things out, but not a big deal. Uh, and then once you're ready to deploy, um, you can again you can deploy uh, Firebase only functions and just deploy that like we did yesterday. Um, or because we're only wanting to deploy this specific function, I, I don't want to redeploy the one I've already done. I'm going to tag update. Uh, followers list the name of my new function to the end here after a colon no spaces in between that way it's indicating that I only want to um, send this new function to Firebase and so I've already like I said done it but if I wanted to do it again I just copy that or type it out and paste it in there and then I could press enter and let it run through its thing again here probably not gonna do a whole lot since it's already up there um, but it's deploying the function, you know, it's going through the process, not throwing any errors, that's what we want, it's a good deal. Um, and it just does what it needs to do here. Um, and again, if you if you didn't watch yesterday's tutorial, you may want to do that so you kind of understand how we got to this particular point in things. Um, but really, I'm just kind of showing you, again, how to, how to deploy this uh, once you have it saved in your index here. Uh, and so you just have to let this run its run its course um, and it take a few minutes sometimes to, to finish up although this one shouldn't take too terribly long um, since I haven't actually made any changes to the code um, just uh, showing the update for um, for this tutorial so I'll let it finish here unfortunately um, so I guess in the meantime of waiting for this sucker to, to hurry up and do what it's going to do, uh, as always, come check us out on the Discord server if you haven't done that already. Um, Discord server is really starting to grow quite a bit, and we've got a lot of great uh, assistance going on over there. Um, 
lot of people are chiming in and helping and asking questions. We've got a, a decent library growing of answered questions. So if you haven't joined us over there, um, please do so. It is free. Uh, there's no paywall or anything like that. Come get answers to your questions or maybe offer to help some other people. Uh, I'll put a, a new link to the Discord in the description of this video as well. All right, so we've already got it, um, got it good to go here. Um, so it went through without a problem. All right, so we can actually let me check out that function if we want to. Um, there's the one we set up yesterday, it's still running, still doing its thing. Um, and then here's the the new one, the uh, the update followers list. This is not running on a cron. It's it's not a it's not a timed function. It runs on update from from the Firestore triggers, so you're not going to see access to the scheduler in in uh, uh, your Firebase functions like you do here, where view and cloud scheduler. Since this is running on a cron job schedule, this one is not, so you're not going to have access to that. You can view the logs and usage and make sure everything's working right, but other than that, it's pretty much just self-contained. So if we go back over here to our Firebase uh, Firestore database. Um, I'm going to pretend this is user A, and I'm going to start following user B. So I'm just going to copy user B real quick here, grab his UID, put it back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and update this one for good measure. And so I'll just plug that in there like that. So now I'm following user B, but I also need to update this field, obviously, because that's what the trigger uh, the function is looking for in the trigger. So go in here, paste that, and now uh, the function should be triggered and it should have read this here, although I didn't see anything light up over here. Um, which is what I'm worried about, given the fact that I'm kind of dealing with some strange data here, and it may be that because of my updated that function. I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, but anyway, let's see if we can get it. Sometimes if you're if you're playing around with data on here and adding stuff and deleting it and then you try and trigger your function on top of that, it, it won't go through. Um, sometimes you have to delete all this stuff back out, which really sucks, but it does happen. Uh, so let me just go through here and delete some of this stuff here. And then I'm going to just grab, oops. Grab that. All right, and now let's see if we can do it. I really hope I don't have to totally delete the users out of here. It's quite possible that I will have to though. Uh, put that in there. Oh, there we go. So it went through. You could see that it up updated. So like I said, sometimes if you've already played around with some data in here and mess with stuff, you have to go through and, and delete it and reset it kind of back to fresh so the function knows what to look for. But anyway, when I updated that uh, last followed update uh, with this user's UID, you saw that this uh, field lit up, meaning that the function triggered and, and identified the correct user document and updated it. So if we go in here... You can see that the users following me has been updated with this user's UID, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Real simple, real straightforward. Um, got any questions? Join us over on Discord. Feel free to ask. Be more likely to answer you there than, than on YouTube. I try my best, but sometimes the YouTube comments get lost. So, All right, that's it for this one. Um, take care.